Welcome to the station of Decapitation Without Your Head. I'm Nasty Neil, and I'm joined by David Andrew James, director of Bag of Lies, coming April 2nd. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. And for people not aware yet, can you give them an idea of what Bag of Lies is about? Bag of Lies is about a man whose wife is dying of cancer, and he turns to an ancient relic that is this giant bag that a stranger gives him, uh, and with the hope that he does this ritual, and three days later, she will be better. But, of course, the title gives away a little spoilers. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, you know, lies abound. Horror ensues, and uh, hopefully it's, you know, sends some chills up some spines. Yeah. So is there any inspiration to this story? Um, you know, do you have any, do you have anyone in your life that was uh, going through illnesses or? Yeah. So, um, we lost my stepmother to cancer about six years ago. Um, and that was, uh, you know, I watched my dad go through that. My whole family go through that. That was a tough, that was a tough experience. Um, and you know, um, so that, you know, for me personally, when I um, did some work on the script, that was, you know, emotionally, that was where my in route was. Um, but uh, Nick Laughlin, one of my uh, co-writers on the film, he actually wrote it as a uh, as a short film um, that I uh, embarrassingly enough acted in. Um, but so that was the so he had come up with the original premise on his own. And we shot that, I think three years ago, uh, just, you know, for funsies, no budget style. And, um, so yeah, you know, we, we spun that into the, into the feature. So is that anywhere the, uh, cause I'll be honest, you're a very hard person to find any information on. Not like I was like trying to stalk you, but, uh, like you don't have a lot, you don't have IMDB credits. I didn't know, uh, if you did shorts before. So is that short available anywhere? Uh, yeah, I believe it's on YouTube and I will, I will get you that link. Okay. And I expect vicious critiques of my act. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, I, you know, I am a little bit of a, uh, a stranger to, um, the film world. I, I got to work on that or maybe keep up the mystique. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So how did you go from, so you make this short, you're in it with your friend, like, uh, you know, you said like no budget thing. Uh, to making a feature film? Uh, it was a very interesting story. Uh, I was uh, the key grip on a feature here in Cincinnati um, in 2022. And I was having a rough day. We were getting, we were getting kicked, you know, and uh, things weren't, you know, things weren't vibing. And so I kind of, you know, one of the producers saw me kind of off in the corner doing one of these and he's like, what's up? And I was like, here's what's up, man. Just kind of vented about the situation and, uh, you know, talked about, uh, you know, said some things that would have got you fired anywhere else. And so anyways, we, uh, but he, you know, we became buddy buddies and afterwards, uh, after we wrapped that movie, he, um, he was like, so the first AD told me that you are a director yourself. And I was like, yeah. He's like, so what do you think you can, you think you can put your money where your mouth is if I give you a shot? And I was like, yes, I, I hope so. So that, you know, that's where, um, that's where all of this kind of started, yeah. uh, just, you know. In the most professional so, ways. <laughs> so, did you have the script or at that time, or did you like get together with the, the guy you made the short with and like let's uh, you know make this into a feature? So, I had actually we I was going to remake it as a uh, as a short film with a with a budget, uh, and so he had already given me his blessing to rewrite it with Joe Zappa, um, and we just you know gave him a copy of that. Uh, to Nick and he was like oh wow I wish I would have thought of that I like it you know god bless two months later I was like hey can I have the right you know sell me the rights for a McChicken and a Jolly Rancher and let's turn this into a feature and um, you know so he uh, he was like yes but I want to be involved and so the three of us got to cooking um, and uh, you know they um, 
I kind of took a back seat, you know, cause I was producing and directing. So I let them take some cracks at it and, um, they, uh, you know, they got it in fighting shape and then they both had to go on and do, um, other projects. So then I wrote the, uh, the final version, which is what you saw. Yeah. Um, so how, how big of a task was that to, you know, make a feature and, uh, did you go to film school or did you kind of learn, uh, being on, on sets of other movies? Uh, it's a little, little bit of both. I mean, technically I went to school, uh, but it was more about like kind of practice or excuse me, it was more about theory than practice. We didn't really have the facilities to, you know, kind of, you know, practice what they were preaching. Um, but I did that for two years and then I immediately just hit the ground running doing, um, indie stuff here in Cincinnati, most of which no one's ever saw, you know, and thank God probably, you know, just kind of learn from failure until I was good enough. And, you know, I've just been kind of jack of all trading. Uh, uh, you know, I've been, uh, cam hopping and gripping and, uh, for other people and then writing and directing my own stuff as well as doing corporate stuff. So it's, you know, yeah, I, people ask and I just say learning from failure is the way that I came up, you know, but, uh, but yeah, finally got what? Shot. Uh, any of your shorts, anything you're involved in, do any of the festivals? Cause I, I think there's a, a, there's a couple of big festivals in Cincinnati. Um, no, I don't think, I think that the shorts that I made might've, um, uh, I think I made them before the Cincinnati festivals got like going, um, or, you know, got like big. Yeah. So I kind of was like, you know, I shot for, you know, Toronto and all the big ones. And then, you know, was so surprised when I didn't get into those and people were like, why don't you submit them to your backyard? But, you know, next time, next time for sure, I'll be, I'll be submitting, but, but yeah, no, I don't think I have many shorts online right now. I think I might have three or four, um, somewhere hidden, but yeah, I'll dig them up. Is it? Uh, for bag of lies, you talk about you know it's a bag from a stranger, and I like that there's not really like a backstory to that guy. Like you don't know how where he got the bag, and and I think that uh, I like that about the movie, and um, I also like the the guy who plays Al uh, Terry. He's a, he's really good in the film. Now, was oh, he someone like you knew beforehand? Or? No, he um, he auditioned uh, through um, through a talent agency. Uh, here in here in the uh, tri-state area and um I'm, i i know people say this and they lie but he literally was the only audition that i saw it was like stop looking give me this guy's phone number um he was just he's just so original and so interesting and you know it was like he's like lightning in this way where you know, no two takes were the same ever. You know, he really just, really just chewed on every piece of what we gave him. And, uh, he was, yeah, he was, he was a dream and I hope to make him like my Michael Caine, you know, I hope to like put him in everything. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, he's great. And <clears throat> I like that everyone, <clears throat> the whole movie has like a, a realism to it because when you start doing, you know, fantastical things, uh, you can, you know, you lose yourself into that if everything else seems like, you know, real people. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, we kind of, um, <clears throat> we kind of wanted to just, you know, uh, always think of it as a drama, um, uh, with, um, you know, a little emotional therapy for myself, a little Tarantino revisionist history. What if, you know, what if that had happened to me? What, if, you know, what if there was magic? what would you do? You know, that kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, you know, we just tried to ground it as best we could and hopefully, uh, hopefully people connect with it. Um, but yeah. Uh, has any of your family seen it since, you know, you have like a personal connection? Not yet. I'm making them wait for the, uh, we're going to do a premiere in, uh, here at Cincinnati on, uh, I believe April 12th. Uh, right, cool. And I just, you know, they're, I just said, just wait, bring some tissues, trigger warning, you know, uh, but no, they're, they are looking forward to seeing it. They've seen the trailer. 
uh, you know, I, and I told them ahead of time, but yeah, no, they're, they're excited. Yeah. And that's the best way to see a movie anyway is, you know, in the theater with people is, you know, obviously it's great to watch stuff at home on your laptop or your, your TV. But if you get the chance to watch it in a theater with people is the best way to watch anything. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're lucky to, uh, um, Epic is also giving us a, 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 a one week run at the Lemley out in Santa Monica. So I'm going to go out there. That's uh, March 29th through April 5th. So for any uh, LA horror hounds that want to come, uh, come witness the bag on the big. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I'm not to get ahead of ourselves, but I also saw there's a physical release. Uh, yeah. yeah there's there's a, a Blu-ray. Um, TBD on where all you can find that. Where do people buy Blue? I guess just Amazon. It's not on Amazon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. You can pre-order it. Yeah, it comes yeah, out like in June, right. I think. So. Yeah, that, that's cool. I mean, not everything gets a physical release today. You, you know, I I feel really lucky for that. I you know I guess they liked what we gave back to them, uh, <laughs> and uh, we hope to you know hoping to do. Many more with Ron so we'll, you know, fingers crossed on that. But, um, but yeah, just you know, it's it's been really great to to work with them and, and uh, have them, you know, give such a give it the attention that I, you know, always dreamed of getting for for a movie. Now, how about coming up with the look for the bag? That might be seem like a silly question, but I mean, it's you know, it's in the title, and you want the bag to look interesting, like uh, like who who actually made the bag and. How much input did you have? And like, you know, I want it to look this certain way. So uh, we, uh, so Nick, the Nick Laughlin, the, the original writer of the short, he had made a version of a bag. I'll, you know, we'll get you the link for that. Um, I wanted to kind of like, you know, weird, weirdly enough, pay homage to it because I, I liked what he did, but I wanted to kind of put my own spin on it. Um, and uh, my production designer, um, Stefanica K, she um, and her partner Maddie, uh, they um, they did the construction on it, and you know it was really just um, a series of conversations. You know, we wanted to uh, for us, it was like this uh, this could be one of the like oldest um, you know cursed items on the planet. Um, you know, we, I believe that Stefanica and I did a lot of research, which I'm now blanking on, but she had, we had, uh, cursed it, bags. say what? On cursed bags. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we, we did, uh, we did research on burlap. And so we kind of like worked in this mythology of like where burlap originated from, Interesting. you know? And so that I want to say maybe France. So then from there it was like, you know, so there would be wine stains on it and there would be, you know, and just kind of, you know, hey, let's take a sander to it. You know, lots of people have, you know, brushed up against this thing and, you know, this this bag is undefeated. So, you know, it's got to have some, you know, some battle damage, but, you know, still have stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you have it anywhere? Like, do you have it in your house? Or? I sleep in it. Uh, no, I uh, talk to you while you're in. <laughs> I believe Stefanica has it, and I am going to make sure that she brings it to the premiere. Um, and uh, but yeah, you know, maybe we should sell them on Amazon along with the, uh, with the yeah, book. right, yeah, they can come back, yeah, bagged in its own bag, like a small, yes. bag put the Blu ray in, yeah, <laughs> that'd be pretty sweet. That would be awesome, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, oh, how about the house that it's shot in? Is that somebody you know? Like, how did you find the house? So, uh, we, that was a townhouse that we rented. Um, my, uh, one of my producers, Victoria McDevitt, did the, uh, she kind of took the, you know, on something like this, everyone's kind of wearing multiple hats. So she, um, uh, you know, kind of tripled up, do, wearing a lot of hats, but one of them was location management. And so she found that and we, uh, uh, you know, we had to give an arm and a leg to shoot there, but it just kind of gave, it was just such a unique place. <clears throat> you know, it was taller than it was wider. And it just, you know, it just had just such, you know, it, it looks modern, but it's creepy somehow, you know, it just, it just had 
a certain uh, panache that we uh, we thought would fit for for what we were cooking up. Did that change? Uh, you know, the actual location when you're there, like it does the like what rooms are there and stuff. Does that change the script at all? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so we. Um, so you know the uh, the chase sequence with um, Peggy uh, about you know forty ish minutes into the film. Uh, the the original way I I had written it for just a, a more standard house, and it was just you know Matt and Claire in an argument, and he just backs out of the room, and he sees her in his living room, and then just shoots straight down to the basement. Um, but you know because of the layout of that townhouse. Uh, you know, much to my first AD's chagrin, when I got there, I was like, I think we can, re- you know, just, we should open this up a bit, you know, so something that's like one eighth of a page in the script is all of a sudden like this, you know, 90 second little chase sequence of, you know, going around the house. Um, so that was really fun. Um, and uh, I guess what other little secrets can I give about the location? Uh, um this is uh, this is a fun one. So the the townhouse itself worked like every layer, uh, the first floor and the second floor were perfect for what we were going after. But the basement was uh, a wreck; it was unfinished, and so we had to stitch another basement in the edit from another location. And um, mm-hmm. so. You know that that proved its own set of challenges. You know, kind of getting it to match as best you can with set deck and production design, um, and then also, you know, you get to that second to last day of shooting, and you're like, oh yeah, 14 pages of this movie is in this basement. This is going to be a fun day. <laughs> we had a great cast and a great crew, and everyone really uh, toughed it out, and uh, yeah, it was a good time. <clears throat> The rest of the crew, were they people you worked with before? Uh, yeah, so um, my producing partners, Jake Heineke, Spencer Price, <laughs> and Victoria McDevitt, I've worked a lot with them, either, you know, either uh, all of us being like, you know, low on the totem pole on bigger movies or, uh, you know, show running our little, you know, $12 budget <laughs> indie stuff. Um, so we've been, I've been working with them for about six or seven years now. Um, Grant Hackney, who was my cinematographer, we met, um, we met two years ago. He was the gaffer on that movie that I told you about where I, uh, unprofessionally got my start for this movie. Uh, but he is a, uh, he is a, a brother in spirit. I love him to death. Really, really knows how to paint with light. Um, and uh, Tanner Sankers, the uh, the sound uh, the sound mixer, he's a uh, he's a pal. Uh, we uh, we just wrapped one uh, this wrapped another feature work together uh, not too long ago. And then Stefanica as well, the production designer, same deal. You know, it was, it was really a um, really a nice little family that we've kind of built and uh, really enjoyed work with everyone. Yeah. So, are you working on anything currently? Um, so I am cooking up my next script. We will see what happens with that, but I'm kind of venturing off into sci-fi territory a little bit. Um, so, uh, yeah, should I, I don't know if I, I guess I'll give you a little, uh, little inside info on what I've heard. All right. Uh, so it's called copy and it is about, uh, someone who was on his way to kind of being a, you know, Tony Stark ish type character in the uh, tech world. And because of personal problems, just kind of circling the drain of an R and D lab, trying to invent the world's first teleporter and uh, things get a little squirrely on. Them. And that plus the title, I'm sure you can guess where it's going to go a little bit, but yeah. you know, hopefully we got enough uh, twists and turns in there that we're doing something original, but uh but yeah, so going to be pitching that over the summer, and hopefully, uh, hopefully that coupled with bag of lies, we get to uh, someone gives us another shot. Yeah, no, that's exciting. And so, uh, so you horror movie, sci fi, like, uh, what movies did you watch growing up, and what like kind of stuff like made you want to become a filmmaker? Oh man, um, 
Well, the uh, I think two movies really shaped me that I saw both before I should have. Um, but the first movie I saw in a movie theater was Jurassic Park, and I was four years old. And it's like my earliest memories of just being terrified. That's a really scary movie, honestly. Like, uh, cause I saw it in the theater, too. I was older. But uh, but it's a lot scarier movie than I think people, you know, think unless you watch it again. And you're like, oh, yeah, there's like, you know, people getting eaten. Yeah, it's gnarly. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, you know, especially being that age, you know, most everyone else is watching. What are they watching? Rugrats at that time or something. But, uh, but yeah, so that really shaped me. And then when I was 10, uh, my grandpa thought he was taking me to see a boxing movie. But it was Fight Club. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that was uh, one of those don't tell your mom kind of things. Um, but yeah, you know, and then just I think, you know, those two movies kind of weirdly, you know, having some chilling moments, not necessarily like what you would think of in terms of horror with either one of those films, but that kind of gave me that bug and then from there you know it was the shining the thing um you know uh and um i always liked the mothman prophecies when i, I thought that I was interesting was a good idea. Yeah. signs you know that was when i was a little, a little have you went and seen the mothman statue in uh in west virginia no i haven't i need to i need that's not too far away from me i might have to do a little hop skip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not very far at all. Yeah, yeah. my former co-host on the show, uh, John, uh, he has pictures with it. It's weird because it's got a very like the statue is a very distinct uh, butt crack for some reason, and people like put coins in there, which is very strange. Yeah, it's like the ass crack bandit off of uh, <laughs> Community. Yeah, but I, it's an interesting one. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not that I've not heard people like the movie, but I've never heard people like bring it up as one of the ones that really stuck with them, the Mothman prophecies. Yeah, you know, I think if I watched it today, I'd be like, this is whatever. But, you know, <laughs> being like 11, 12, I think yeah. it came out, it was like, you know, it's just creepy. Um, but yeah, you know, and then, I, th you know, the one movie that got me as an adult was Hereditary. You know, I don't think that I had slept with the lights on since, you know, I watched like The Ring or something. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, that was, um, that was refreshing um, to, you know, see someone kind of make a, you know, a, 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 a family drama that is also just absolutely terrifying. And that was, you know, also like part of the inspiration for us in terms of tone with Bag of Lies was just, you know, like, like, as you said, you know, trying to ground it, keep it, yeah, yeah, and then you also have this like this old yeah, it's it it yeah, like you said, it's a family drama, but it's uh grounded in reality, but it has this old like curse around it and stuff and and uh, as a station decapitation, I kinda have to like hereditary. And not to spoil it if no one's seen hereditary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have it, see that and then see Bag of Lies. <laughs> right. It's a double feature. Yeah, exactly. You know, get uh Get your popcorn in one of those dune buckets and uh, <laughs> to, those, go to town. Yeah. yeah, yes, I have. Yeah, I haven't seen the movie, but I've seen the buckets. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. Look, <laughs> that's you know what that should be our pot. We should get uh, the bag. A bag, yeah. Bags, a little burlap. Oh, yeah, great. bring back instead. Yeah, instead of a bucket, a bag like they used to have. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like it's like kind of a William Castle kind of a gimmick here. I like, it. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's a so, very old uh, reference, but yeah. Say what? I said it's a very old reference. Yeah, like William absolutely. Castle. But yeah, I'm sure people out there know who he is. That's before. That's even before my day, though. <laughs> so I, I, it's probably too early since uh, you're having the premiere coming up, and it hasn't. It's not on VOD yet. But uh, what's the feedback been like so far? Have you had any feedback? I have only had feedback from our distributor um, and a couple of, uh, and then the, you know, a couple of people that worked on the movie uh, have seen it. And uh, so I've only gotten biased feedback, you know, right now, or at least, you know, I'm just trying to 
think that way. Um, you know, kind of trying to be honest with myself, you know, just prepare for the, the YouTube hatred or the IMDb. No. Yeah, if you don't, if you're not aware, the internet's a very negative place. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Hence why I'm not on it very much. You know, I have like Instagram and that's about it. But, uh, but no, I mean, you know, I think the, you know, the, um, the producers really liked it. The distributor liked it enough to, you know, give us a little theatrical run and, and a Blu-ray release, pulling out all the stops. So, you know, hopefully the audience agrees with them. <laughs> what did you think? I I dug it. I like I like I like I was saying. I like that it's uh, I like the whole history of the bag and the rules for the bag, and you, I like it when uh, you stick to the rules, you know, in in the movie, and I like all that stuff. And I and I love Al. Yeah, Al is he's the scene stealer. You know, he's every every person who runs into him. You know, that's what I told Patrick Taft, who played Matt, the lead character. Uh, I was like, buddy. You know, you're great, but yeah, I don't want to not bring him up either. You, you, the couple, you, the main leads, and the in the movie. Uh, how did you, did you know the, both those before? Uh, and how how did you cast both of them? Yeah, so uh, Patrick and I met on a short film that I was the DP for. I think in 2017, um, and I just really. Uh, really enjoyed working with him and I thought he was a really good actor and so we've just always you know I think later that year I put him in a web series I did called Fixing a Hole which uh, I think might be on Vimeo or YouTube um, but yeah so he was uh, he was great in that and we just you know kept in touch over the years like let's do something let's do something and finally you know we got to got the swing for the fences. Um, and then as far as Brandy Bakken goes, who plays Claire, um, she, uh, she is a, a force to be reckoned with in the, uh, you know, both theater and film world. Uh, she does a lot of local theater here in Cincinnati. Um, and, uh, you know, her much like Terry, you know, they're just my good luck charms. You know, they're just, they're troopers, they're killers, you know, they just, they can do anything. And, uh, and they can do no wrong for me. Um, but yeah, I've known her about the same amount of time, and um, you know, we finally got to uh, finally got to collaborate as director and actor. Now, now, did he play you? What you played in the short? Is he like? Yeah, this? yeah, I played Matt in the short, and um, you know, Nick. When I called Nick to tell him, you know, like, hey, I'm gonna remake this, he was like. Please tell me you're not playing Matt again. <laughs> That's not, it's not very nice. It, but yeah. No, no, he's yeah, he was kidding. But no, but yeah, I think Patrick, you know, <laughs> so did uh, you know? I think he did a better service to that character. So, you know, uh, are you still doing acting, or is this something you you want to uh, do any more of? You know, I do enjoy it. Um, I, it's you know, I'm kind of becoming this master of none guy, where I'm, you know, I just kind of go where the wind blows me in terms of you know any given position that i am interested in on on a film set um so i you know i should i should really just kind of focus more on directing but i do i do it i love acting it's you know i i uh did theater in middle school and high school um uh, so yeah it's nice to kind of dust off those uh those skills every now and again uh maybe you'll see me in the next one we'll see all right. Well, I, I would assume that would help uh, in your directing, though, having an acting background. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely, um, it definitely gives a really good. Um, I think the biggest thing that it uh, taught me was like knowing when not to bother them. Um, you know, more so than than everything, and um, and really just kind of like, you know, focus more on like uh technical notes in terms of you know even if it's about emotions you know just speak to them about like you know when to modulate you know like hey if you know if you're gonna do this you know if you're gonna cry i need you to not do it until you know here as opposed to like so this is your reason for crying you know they they're trained you know they like you know 
and we work very closely. You know, I wrote backstories for all the characters. So, you know, all of, we all did our homework enough to, you know, they all were very centered with emotionally speaking with where their characters were. So once we were on set, it was more about like, you know, just kind of playing that, um, you know, just giving it more of a, uh, kind of orchestrating the dance, so to speak. Um, you know, cause I like to, um, you know, keep the actors moving, uh, you know, really try and block and stage a lot of things, you know, not just have people standing in the middle of a room talking. Um, so, you know, giving that, um, you know, theater element to it, um, uh, you know, it, it, it distracts them well enough that they're just, you know, uh, um, they're kind of, they have to walk and chew gum at the same time. You know, they have to really, it's demanding. And I, you know, I'm stealing secrets from the greats, you know, Fincher and Spielberg, you know, they, they're always blocking and staging as such. And so, um, but yeah, no, I, I, I do enjoy, um, I do enjoy the, uh, the, excuse me, got a little hair in my throat. I do enjoy the, uh, uh, the benefits that acting gave me in terms of finally getting to direct, you know, it, yeah, helped out a lot. Uh, you mentioned you're on, um, Instagrams, but where, where could people follow you if you want them to, or follow uh, bag of wise, you know, see the, where it's going. So you can follow, uh, I believe, uh, Epic pictures and dread central both on Instagram. Um, and I'm sure they're on Facebook, you know, they're on they're everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you know, they're not hard to find. Um, my Instagram handle is, uh, Ernest tripping leg, which is. That was exactly what I was going to guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it used to be Abe Froman, but, uh, someone bought that off of me years ago. Well, okay. so, uh, you know, that's a hot commodity being the sausage king of Chicago. Um, but, uh, is that how you pick your names on Instagram? You're like, well, hopefully someone will uh, offer me some money for this. Down the road. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I might start doing that, you know, the way you <laughs> to buy up website. Um, yeah. It's how you can fund the next, the, the next film. There you go. I can, yeah, I'll just <laughs> I'll pick a bunch of sweet, you know, get, uh, you know, I'll pick a bunch of Clint Eastwood character names, <laughs> create a bunch of handles. And, um, but yeah, you know, I, uh, uh, but yeah, so that's where I'm at in terms of social media and, uh, otherwise I'm non-existent in the digital world. <laughs> but, the, you know, the real that question about that, though, does that ever, is that ever a problem? Maybe not so much being the director, but I know from experience, people sometimes will ask me like, so to suggest like an actress who's very uh, on social media a lot because they're going to promote uh, the film that they're going to be in. So does that, is that ever an issue? Like, Oh, Andrew, uh, David, you should be on, on the internet somewhere to get to promote this movie a little more. Well, um, luckily Epic hasn't yelled at me about that. So, you know, I do I, think it's uh, more probably for, for actors. Yeah. I think they, you know, I think they have to play the game. Um, you know, if I do ever get hit with that question, I'll just kind of be like, trust me, you don't want me to, <laughs> you know, I'll just end up posting a bunch of memes instead of marketing now. But, um, but yeah, no, I just, um, I do enjoy, uh, my, um, my privacy, but, um, but yeah, I should, uh, I, I should do a little more promotion. I got to get better at it. You got to give me some tips and tricks. Well, I mean, there's off, off, oftentimes I'm like, man, I wish I wasn't on social media, but it you kind of, I kind of have to to promote the shows. Yeah, love the show. Yeah. So honestly, um, years ago, because we started in 2006, and a, a listener of the show sadly passed away very young, but he was like, um, you guys should get on face uh, Facebook. And I was like, eh, whatever. He's like, do you mind if I make you a without your head Facebook page? I was like, yeah, I don't care. I mean, no one's going to go there. But, and you know, it's the same one we use today. So. That's same awesome. Same thing happened, uh, actually, even uh, originally we was this internet radio. And then pe someone was like, oh, you should put this on this new thing called podcast. And I was like, oh, what's that? And 
So anyway, uh, listen to listen listen to young people who uh, know what they're talking about. Is my uh, message to people. Absolutely, those young whippersnappers with their N sixty fours and their Razor scooters. Exactly, exactly. That is actually the last um, gaming system I played was the N sixty four. Nice. Yeah. I uh, the the movie that I'm working on right now. Uh, someone had a. I thought it was a Game Boy, but it's like an Emanator. And you can put oh, all right. anything on it. So I've just yeah. been, you know, on the grip truck, Mario karting on this little contraption. That's what it's back. I mentioned John earlier, who uh, co-founded the show with me. He hasn't been on for over ten years, but um, but he's very against the the those because it's like you have to play the actual systems and let's so he buys like the actual pinball games. I'm like, I mean, that's cool and all, but it would be a lot easier just to. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a purist, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'll bet he uh I'll bet he would be a film over digital kind of a guy too, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think he has a tube TV or the CTR TV and whatever. Yeah. Max only. Yeah, he only watched yeah, exactly. But forget no, he's a good guy. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, well let's, <laughs> yeah. This has been fun and uh people should check out Bag of Lies April second. And the premiere was, uh, what was the date for the premiere? So the uh, L.A. screening premiere will be March 29th at the Lemley Theater in Santa Monica. And then I believe it goes video on demand April 2nd. Yeah, very cool. So I would get to the premiere if you're, if you're out there. And uh, if not, get the uh, video on demand. And then a little bit later, the Blu-ray will come out later this year. Absolutely. And follow Ernest. Uh, it wasn't Ernest Hemingway, but it was Ernest. Uh, Ernest Trippingway. I got to change it. I got to get Abe Roman back. <laughs> I, I, I should be a name of a, of a movie. I need I need Abe Froman back. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Bag of Lies Part Two. It's just called I Need I Need Abe. <laughs> back, right, right. I like it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again, this man, Gould. And I yes, hope to talk to you again sometime. You're the best, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.